Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are absolutely fantastic. Today, we're testing this new dash cam from DDPi. It's the Mini One Night Vision or with an excellent night vision, let's put it that way. Let's put it that way indeed. Back to the studio. Guys, let's do a really quick unboxing. Let's go through the specs and then we'll go back to the footage. So there you have it guys, the DDPi Mini 1. On the back, we can see some specs. Mini 1, night vis, 32 gigs, ultra low illumination. He has the new Sony IMX307 sensor and an aperture of f1.8. Here you can see he records 1080p with the codec H265. Let's bring this out of the box. Let's see what we have here. So you have the DDPi Mini 1 here. Very nice design in my opinion, very discreet. I do like it. And remember guys, it has an internal storage so you don't need to provide any SD card. 32 gigs of internal storage. Let me just remove this. There you go. Yeah guys, this is a good looking camera, nice specs. Special for night driving, this was designed with that in mind according to DDPi. Internal fast storage EMMC 5.1. Here you can see the mount itself. So a very small footprint camera. You can see the mic hole there and the reset hole as well. Lens on the front, just the logo. You stick that into your windshield and you just slide the camera in like so. You can point it up or down using the app to see where the camera is aiming to and there's a LED, a status LED on the back of the camera as well. So guys, let's have a look what we have here in the box. We have a long charging cable, USB to 3.5 millimeters. This is how you plug it to the camera. We also have a car cigarette lighter charger with two USB ports, one for the camera and the other one to plug any other device that we would like to charge, for example. There's this tool to run the wires on your car, through your headliner and on the side seals, for example. We have an extra sticker. And finally, we have the user manual written in English, comprehensive one. This, everything in this camera is controlled by the app, but I do recommend you guys to have a quick read at this. And without any further ado, guys, let's go back to the footage. Let's see what this camera is all about. And there you have it, guys. The footage of the DDPi Mini 1 Night Vis. Bright sunny day. Here you can see the field of view. 140 degrees for this particular model. Let's bring the file details on the screen. Pause if you want to see it in detail. But straight away, we can see the bitrate. 11 megabits per second. 1080p but the codec for some reason here it's H.264 not H.265. I'll double check with DDPi why we're seeing um, this codec and not the new one the H.265. I'll keep you updated maybe down below in the video description or in the comments. Also I did a second test on the Mac uh, info file and I did get the same information H.264. And guys now let's do some more tests. Let's uh, test a double DR, the wide dynamic range of the camera and the direct sunlight on the camera lens. Moving on to another footage, here you can see the darker areas here and the brighter scenes. See if you can get all the details around us. Here we got again some shadow and some bright sunlight hitting the camera lens. This is a very good test I like to do. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about the quality, the video quality of the camera. So far, I think it's doing a good job. Regarding the image sharpness, DDPi tends to over sharp the image, slightly over sharp. Some people complain, I don't mind. And this one, the new uh, mini one, it follows the same, the same trending from DDPi. It's slightly over sharpened, but I don't mind at all. You can see more detail. Sometimes you get trees, probably it gets a bit noisier the image, if this makes any sense. And now guys, let's move back to the car. This will be picked up from the camera's microphone. Let me just show you something.
this dash cam doesn't have any button to lock files so you need to trust the sensor of the camera itself but it's quite sensitive let me just try to show you here see any hard breaking might trigger the camera for some reason. Uh, in my honest opinion, I think you probably need to lower the um, the sensitivity of the sensor. Another example here. Yeah, the camera takes automatically a picture and saves 10 seconds of footage that will be locked. Maybe you should lower the sensitivity of the G sensor inside the app. Speaking of that, let's have a look at the app while we're driving alongside this beautiful sunset here in Birmingham. So on the right side, there's the app. You just need to add the camera using the Wi-Fi connectivity. We'll see the camera there and the password is one, two, zero. And you get a live feed of the camera. Here is me moving the camera up and down so you can aim it to the road. Here on the timeline, you can scrub back and forward just in case if you want to search for some parts of your journey, some bits that you want to see. And then you just need to press the play button. Wait a second or so. This camera is a fast storage, which is good. And you will have a preview of the clip itself. If you want to download, just press the down button, the down arrow button there. Pick what you want, the footage you're looking for you can see it in full screen and then you have the option to save it to your phone like this and press complete download when there's nothing else on the clip that you want to save on the main screen of the app at the bottom you have a few buttons like on the road which is like a social media for ddpi where users can share their videos on the plus sign the plus red sign it's where you can share your footage or videos to your own social media like Facebook, etc. It'll give you the options to pick the clips you want. On the albums, it's where you can find your pictures and videos. And finally, on the Me section, right bottom corner, it's where you have your settings like the camera settings, account settings and app settings. Let's have a quick look at that. And you have all these settings and moving on to the camera settings itself mini one at the top you have the camera name and password you have the volume adjusting where you can control the sound from the camera speaker you have the option to record sound or not capture with video clip it's for the locked files 10 seconds only there's nothing you can do about this image quality level 1080p or 720p and this is this aspect ratio. You have 16 by nine and Blu-ray cinema mode, which gives you some black bars at the top and at the bottom. Over here, you have the date and time settings, start song, well, we have the DDPi chime and the G sensor sensitivity. This is what uh, I was talking about, the camera sensitivity. Maybe start uh, in middle and go from there. The last thing on this menu is the parking mode where you have different options. Of course, to get the full potential of the parking mode, you should get a hardwire kit from DDPi. I'm going to test one on the channel pretty soon. Stay tuned for that. With the hardwire kit, it will detect the voltage of your car battery, so it will switch off the camera if it goes too low, and it will detect the status of the car itself, which means when you park the car and switch off the ignition, it will enter parking mode, it will take one picture per second, and vice versa, when you start the car, it will detect that status as well. Nevertheless, even without the kit, the camera will start and stop recording on its own. Soon as you start the car, soon as the camera has power, it will start recording on its own and vice versa. When the car is off, the camera will stop recording on its own. On my car, for example, I know that the power is always on, no matter what, even if I lock the car. So for the sake of the video, I did this test for you. You will see, so I just locked the car. It's 1648. Let's now jump in time. After 15 minutes, approximately, with no movement, the camera will enter in a time-lapse mode. That will be set on the app like I showed you before. Pretty good stuff. 
bear in mind that the power needs to be always on and it will drain your battery and some cars don't have this nevertheless when you return to the car and start the car the camera will detect the movement and will start recording automatically in at the normal speed hope this was clear guys stay tuned for the hardwire kit on the channel i'll try my best to show you how to install it and how it will work and now guys it's a good opportunity to show you the footage uh, during the night uh, like i mentioned before this camera has a 307 the sony 307 starvy sensor which according to the dpi will be excellent during the night let's move on to another scene here Again, let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about this dash cam. Let's do another test, which is testing the gap between clips. The camera will record in small clips and on some dash cams, you get a small gap without any footage and an accident might happen on that split of a second. So guys, uh, have a look at the video and the next clip will start now. As you could see, there was no gap between clips, so thumbs up for that. And saying that, guys, I think it's time to wrap this video. Overall, the DDPi Mini 1 dash cam, I think it's a good product in my honest opinion. It has nice functions, that is good, and the camera is discreet enough. If you want a camera with the screen, maybe this is not a product for you, but you can use the app for everything you need. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can check it out this camera. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like button and please guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I must thank you very much for that. Like always, thank you very much for watching and hope I can see you all in the next one.